Well, greetings to you. Uh, welcome to this week of Journey, our online Bible study from Wake Forest Baptist Church. I'm grateful you are here today, and today we're doing something a little bit different than what we normally do. We have been going through a particular study of the book of Job, which we just finished last week, and we will continue to study through different parts of Scripture and, and journey along with what's happening in them to see where our lives intersect with those in some way and what our journey is uh, revealing to us even now. But with that in mind, I wanted us to take some time, given what today is and this season is, to reflect on some other parts of our journey and how we uh, connect those to uh, memory and remembering and legacy and some of those uh, important parts of, of who we are. And so today uh, in worship, this is October 31st, this is Halloween, um, but today in worship, uh, our sermon from Dr. Slater was about our identity and remembering who we are and uh, using the, the powerful uh, symbol of Ash Wednesday, of the imposition of ashes at the end of the service today to remember um, who we are in Christ, to remember our mortality, the encouragement to remember our baptism, and just remember things about who we are because of who Christ was and is. And I wanted us to connect that to what we are doing next Sunday, November 7th, which is All Saints Day, um, and thinking about um, remembering those that have gone before us, remembering our loved ones, particularly those uh, that, have, that have died this past year, and honoring them, honoring their memory, but thinking about who we are because of those people as well, of connecting something about our identity to the legacy of those who've gone before us, similarly, um, yet differently, to how we connect our identity to the legacy of Christ and who Christ was in going before us. That's That sense of remembering who we are because of who someone else is or has been. So I wanted to give you a quick overview, uh, a little bit of, of of what this season is. And as, as I said, today's a little bit different. We're not doing a, a, our standard Bible study on, on a scripture passage or a verse, but I wanted us to reflect on some of the Christian tradition behind this particular season. And I don't mean Halloween, but I mean some of the tradition behind that that has offered us what we know of as Halloween today. And that is the, the Christian tradition and uh, holy days of feast days of All Hollow Tide. So some of you may be familiar with this idea that you know what we know of as Halloween is actually a secularized and over time uh, derivation of this idea of All Hallows Eve, which is the beginning of a three day uh, the triduum, uh, this three day feast event of remembering the saints who've gone before us in our life, all the way back to the time of Pope Gregory, uh, to the earlier days of formalized Christianity uh, and the tradition of having feast days. And so traditionally in the calendar, November 1st, every time it falls, uh, is the day known as All Saints Day or All Hallows or Hallowmas, uh, and the day after, November 2nd, All Souls Day. But the day before All Saints, October 31st, is the Eve of All Hallows. So it's All Hallows Eve. Hollow Eve, Halloween is where that comes from. But these three days are collectively called All Hollow Tide. All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day, All Souls Day. October 31st, November 1st, November 2nd. And these days are a time for honoring the saints whether they are kind of literal saints and um, identified as such, or the everyday saints of our lives, and praying for the recently departed souls, those in the last year or so. Um, the tradition that we will celebrate next week in our worship setting, on uh, November 7th, All Saints Day, is a bit of a um, bringing together of those traditions of, of honoring the the saints of the year before. But this is a, a, a long-standing uh, Christian holy tradition, a feast tradition of remembering these that have gone before us and using these days on the calendar every year 
to begin with a, a vigil, a candlelight service, a vesper service, an evening service going into this all hollow tide and of using candlelight to, to light candles and to remember the people that have gone before us. And so I wanted for us to take just a few moments to connect the ideas of today's sermon to this season that we're in and the tradition that we will observe next week of All Saints of remembering those who've gone before and to think about our identity because of who has gone before us. So that was today's encouragement was to think about who, who are we in Christ? What is our identity because of uh, our remembering who Christ was and is? In fact, if we were to take some time this week, one of the invitations I want to offer today is to reflect a little bit on the scripture of the Last Supper. And so if you were to go to the Synoptic Gospels, to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and read those uh, stories there, then you would um, hear in those uh, Last Supper stories and telling of Jesus' last meal, the words, remember, do this in remembrance of me. Later in Corinthians, when Paul is, is remembering this moment, he, he's talking about uh, using that same language of, of remembering who Christ was as a way of then remembering who we are and who we are called to be. And so there's this invitation to remember in these days of, of hollow tide, of all hollow tide, of, to remember those who've gone before, but certainly that includes the one who went before, whose identity we are most deeply connected to. But in that same idea, we are also formed by the, the people who have gone before us. You know, for me, I, I, I can't separate my calling to ministry and the work that I do in my own faith from family members of mine who have gone before me, who have set the example of what this faith of doubt looks like, of what Christian ministry, in fact, looks like. Uh, me being the third generation of Baptist ministers, there is tradition, there is connection uh, and remembrance of those, my grandfather, my grandparents, other people who have gone before, whose legacy is linked to my identity and my memory of them is a part of understanding who I am today. And that's what this time of All Hollow Tide invites us into. Most of the time we we kind of blitz through Halloween and go jump right into Thanksgiving or Christmas, and our church might, like ours, have an All Saints Day. But for all of us, we have our own traditions of remembering those who've gone before us. But here is this time we've been kind of offered in the Christian tradition, uh, not always typically the one we're a part of, but to take this time and collectively remember all those who've gone before us and what that means for our own identity. What does it mean to remember the saints and the souls who've gone before and to form our own sense of legacy and, and connectivity to that. So this week I wanted to do just a couple of very simple things. I wanted to help raise your awareness to this Christian tradition of all hollow tide, uh, even if it's one not necessarily in our particular practice, except that it, it is in that we use the first Sunday of every year, of every November to do this All Saints celebration in our church. And here's some of the, the history of that. It's connected to this season that begins with, in the tradition, the candlelight vigil, the Vesper service of All Hallows Eve, of lighting those candles to remember the saints and then the souls those next two days. So the other thing I'm inviting us to do is to find that practice this week, maybe take time Maybe it's just a list, to write a list of all those who've gone before you, whose, whose lives had impact on yours, and in some way your identity is then formed because of who they were, and, and to give thanks for them, to pray for them, to offer a prayer for our own sense of who we are because of them. But then also to go to this 
story in scripture of Jesus's last supper with his, the people he was closest to, who he said, each time you do this thing, this act of eating bread and drinking wine and, and doing this, do it in remembrance of me, remember who I am because who you are is formed and shaped and influenced by and because of who Christ was and is. It helps us find deeper connection to that Last Supper moment and to the resurrection story on the whole, that we cannot be who we are separate from who Christ was and is. Our identity is formed, it's linked, it is, it is deeply intertwined with the story of Christ. But our remembrance of that helps us to fully be in touch with our identity and who we are. So perhaps you you take time to pray over that, to read the stories from Matthew and Mark and Luke, to read Peter's, uh, or excuse me, Paul's remembrance in, in 1 Corinthians of, of those moments, um, to take time and and to observe that Last Supper as a way of uh, recognizing uh, more deeply what this time of all saints and souls is. So as uh, encouragement, here are some of those scripture passages that you might turn to and read as a way of remembering something about your identity by remembering Christ in the Last Supper. In Matthew, it's Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 29. In Mark, it's chapter 14, verses 12 to 25. Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 38. And then I mentioned 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 25. Uh, Paul's reflection, that, in fact, the words we take from Scripture and use at the, um, the invitation for the Lord's Supper. Take some time to read those this week and to consider your identity because of remembering Christ. And then also take time this week to maybe light a candle for someone or several someones whose identity has also helped shape you, particularly those who, whose lives helped shape your faith. And let this be a week of, of remembrance to celebrate this all hollow tide that leads us to next Sunday, where as a church we'll participate in All Saints Day. So as I said, this week's a little bit different. It's a reflection, it's an invitation, it's hopefully raising your awareness of of what this season is and where it comes from and some of these traditions that even our church does participate in. But a way to remember, remember who you are by remembering what Christ has done and a way of remembering who and thinking about who we are by remembering those who have shaped who we are here on earth. So I'd like to end with a prayer uh, that has been written uh, for this time, for this All Saints time and encourage you to, to hear it and use it as your own prayer of remembrance this week as you remember and reflect on your identity and those who've gone before, most especially the example of Christ and our remembrance of him. So hear this prayer and let it be our own. I give you thanks, our God and Father, for all those who have died in the faith of Christ for the memory of their words and deeds and all they accomplished in their time, for the joyful hope of reunion with them in the world to come, and for our communion with them now in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So remember this week, reflect and consider who you are because of who has gone before you. Go in peace.